Hi, I'm Oliver. Welcome to my first official uh, book review of my channel. Um, today I'm reviewing a book from somebody you probably did not know about. Um, I only read one book from this author. Um, his name Imre Kertes, according to the pronunciation I could find on Wikipedia of his name. Um, I didn't know of him. Um, I was with a friend one day. I like going to those used bookstore and just fell around until I could do something interesting. And my friend knew of him, so he advised I'd check it out. Um, I was intrigued by the fact that the author won the Nobel Prize, Nobel, Nobel Prize of Literature. That's it. That was hard to say somehow. In 2002, so not specifically for the book I read, but in general his, um, his body of work uh, was rewarded. Um, you know, I've read it, I liked it ever since. You know, I bought it for a couple of friends for their birthday. I, my mom read it. They all liked it and might not be the best birthday present when you think about it, but it's a great book. Um, the name of the book, I read it in French. Um, I don't like reading in French. I like to read in the original language as much as possible. So in this case, this was in Hungarian. I do not speak Hungarian. And um, so therefore French or, or English would have been just fine by me. So the name of the book is uh, Être sans destin, that's uh, in French, literally being without destiny. In English, there's two translations for the title. Um, it's either Fateless or Fatelessness. Um, from what I read, the first translation was Fateless, then they changed it. They made a revised translation and named it Fatelessness. So if you go to a bookstore like I do, don't be surprised if you find both. Um, Fateless is the first book I read about anything related to the Holocaust. I'll be honest, it's not something that, um, how can I say? I mean, I've obviously known about the Holocaust, but I never, you know, throughout all my academic journey, but you know, all the time that I've been in school, I never really had to read about it. It's not something that Anyway, I've never been immersed, so to me, it sort of was this, um, it was foreign to me. I just, I sort of knew of it, but never really looked into it or got interested in it. So, yeah, a little bit foreign would be the right word. So, when I checked it out, I was like, okay, now, one of the reasons I checked it out was the fact that, oh, I've never read about anything regarding, I mean, even to this day, I've never even read Anne Frank, uh, but the diary of Anne Frank said, it. um, I mean, I've never even watched The Son of Music, so, um, so I just decided to read it. So it's, um, the story is basically, it's a semi-autobiographical yeah, if I either butchered that word or invite, invented a new word. So um, it's somewhat based on the author's life. And it's basically the story of this young guy who is in, um, living in Budapest. And he got sent to a concentration camp then moved to another concentration camp and then to another concentration camp and towards the end he got sick so he spent a lot of time almost dying in the hospital and then it was over for him and then he went back to his life so the the book covers a very well a very covers a short period of time the story picks up where he gets sent to a concentration camp towards the end of war so in all of his bad luck 
the good luck he got was that he did not, even though he did three concentration camp, he was not in concentration camps for a long time. And since he got sick at the end, he spent a lot of time in the hospital. And then instead of being released from the hospital and going back to the concentration camp, the war ended and he went back to Budapest. So, that's the very general guideline of the story or the structure of the book. Now, when you... Okay, young people are resilient, right? Well, not just young people. Usually you're resilient. You Some people just adapt to it. And when you read the book, that's what you get the feeling with the main character. You know, instead of going to by his usual daily routine and he's like well i'm being swept up to go to concentration camp it sucks but hey i'm going there and he's i don't know if it's because he's in shock or he's just overwhelmed but he's very unfazed by what's happening to him obviously you know it's not optimal you know he used to live very quiet Life with, you know, his family, friends, and neighbors, and he got ripped off of that, ripped, ripped off of, of that. But he, weirdly enough, he, he misses them, but I think to me, you know, why did the concentration camp keep going, went on and on and on and on and on, and to me, I think that's what, this book captures is that the numbness he just gets numb you know you don't eat well you're in extreme condition and I don't know he just he just feels numb and I think what I might have first thought as being unfazed or what, what's happening here why isn't he enraged why isn't he trying to get out yes he's young yes he might be overwhelmed but what's going on but I think it's he's just numb and because he was sent to the hospital and because he was not there for a long time and because it did not see because um him and his family got stranded and he did not see anybody close to him get murdered as you know about concentration camps and all that it makes the reading a very gray read it's sort of ambiguous you know the the book ends and, you know, the author and the character are basically saying, you know what, when I was in the concentration camp, I knew where I needed to be, at what time, I did not need to provide for myself. Now what do I do? And how do I go back? And it's this sort of, maybe not missing the concentration camp, but you know, comes back to that numbness, that whole, I don't need to think for myself, being stripped of a will. And, um, and the fact that, you know, he did not, you know, I'm not downplaying anything about the Holocaust here, but the experience of the character is, quote, not that horrible, and therefore the um the memories that he had that he has of the holocaust of the concentration camps were not that horrible you know you read this book it's not that big of a read um let's see the book i have is 360 something pages written fairly big so in english i would assume maybe Probably something like around 300 pages, maybe. It's usually um, shorter in English. So, you know, you can read it quickly and... I don't know. To me, it was interesting. You know, they say, you know, in life, there's, you know, there's no black or white. You know, it's all about gray areas. And the Holocaust, to me, is not, there's no debate about whether it's black or white. It's, you know, 
It's black all the way. And yet you read this book and you're like, well, okay. So, yeah. I'd say that the author did capture vividly the experience that he had and the way that he translated it in, you know, the prose and the action and the storytelling were revealing of that experience as well. It was a quick read. You know, make, make you stop and think, which is always nice. I'm not saying that I didn't sleep for days thinking <gasps> and, and not, uh, um, analyzing this book. I never know which book. I'd say that word in English. You know, but yeah, every time I have it read to friend, that's basically the question, the, the feedback that I get, which is, huh? Really? It was, it didn't seem that horrible. And yeah, but it's written, you know, at the first, it's a first, it's written as a first person novel. Um, the character is quite young, so, you know, everything about this book is just, to me, it's mandatory reading, you know, it should be, well, first of all, it, yes, it's the Holocaust, and it's about someone who actually lived there, but it's a Nobel Prize winning author, and this, the book has been praised from what I could read online. I strongly suggest that you give it a try. Yeah, just give it a try. If you've read it, comment below, let me know what you think, you know, I basically did this so that we could, I could have a conversation about books with people, um, did, you know, if this book hit you closer, closer to home than it did to me, you know, you can let me know, uh, what language did you read it in, um, yeah, it's an interesting re read. That's for sure. It's worth your th time. It's worth your money. It's just great. It's just great.